Ladies and gentlemen, I was a hero last night. It was awesome. It was pretty cool. I've been walking around the house like Patrick Swayze. Caroline can't stand it, but here's what happened. So last night I ended stream early and I got in bed early because I had to wake up really early and get to set and do makeup and shave. Obviously, I can't just do a buzzer shave. I got to shave my face. So I was in bed at like one o'clock, which is, if you know me, is very early for me. Right around two o'clock, we hear someone just laying on the car horn outside of our apartment. Just bah, 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 bah. Caroline and I are like, what the f is that? What is that? That's like, why is someone doing this this late at night? It's crazy. I don't really care though. I'm so desensitized by LA. I'm like, whatever, I'll f sleep through it. I was, I think I was reading Kaiju number eight at the time. I was reading a manga. So I was really just over it. Caroline on the other hand was like, ah, this sounds pretty bad. I hear people screaming. I'm gonna go check out what's going on. So Caroline throws on her robe and goes onto our deck. All of a sudden I hear Caroline go, and I know there's trouble because that's Caroline's guttural noise for shit is bad. Right? When she sounds like Donnie from the Wild Thornberries, I know shit's cracking off. So I put on a pair of silk pants, pajama pants, and I grabbed my stun gun that I have that has a flashlight and a laser beam on it. So that shit is fucking super fucking serious. So I run out there, and as I get out there, this one car is just smashing into the car in front of it over and over again, just pow, pow, pow. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? The couple that was in the car that was getting smashed jumped out of the car and they were like on the sidewalk because the person behind them was like clearly insane. And it was a, it was a young black couple and the guy was like yelling at the dude, like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, <laughs> I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Stop. Which, to be fair, if someone was repeatedly ramming my car at two in the morning, I'd probably do the same. So immediately, this is like an insane situation watching this happen right in front of my apartment building. Not more than two seconds later, the driver of the car that was ramming the other car throws his car in reverse and tries to kill the dude's girlfriend. Like, literally just backs his car full speed at her. She jumps out of the way. He throws it in drive, blows past her again, and then throws it in reverse again. Tries to come back and hit her. At that point, all shit has broken loose. And I have a fucking stun gun with a laser beam and a flashlight. And I'm like, this guy doesn't know that this isn't a gun. So I point the laser beam at this dude's fucking dome piece and the flashlights on him and his the laser beam is on his fucking forehead in his car and i went full blown like tactical authority voice i was like stop your fucking car turn off the goddamn engine pussy on the pavement like all that shit and the dude stopped his car and the guy whose girlfriend it was, is now like livid. He's like banging on the window, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, damn, this is not a real gun. This is a fucking stun gun. And I do not have the upper hand. I got to get these people the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I was like, get in the apartment building. Go, leave, run. It's not worth it, bro. Get out of here. So... This couple, like after another 30 seconds, like kind of booked it into our apartment building. And then this guy just sped off and took off. Within 10 minutes, LAPD shows up, fucking helicopters overhead. I shit you not, I've never seen this. The night crawler dude showed up. They're like two or three guys pull up in their cars with like over the shoulder cameras looking for shit going down because now there's a report that there's a guy on the scene with a fucking gun. It's me with a taser. And uh, yeah, I get an interviewed by the LAPD for like the next 30 minutes about what happened. Most of them were cool, but there was like one chief lady who was like, so there's no victims, right? No one was hit. And I was like, no, but he, tr he tried to kill them. 
She's like, yeah, but there was no like victims, right? Like no one got hurt. And I was like, well, it was attempted manslaughter. Like th- it was like GTA shit. There's no, there's no way to interpret it other than, and she was like, well, he's, well, was the other guy trying to drive away? And I was like, unless he was trying to parallel park at a hundred miles per hour, I don't think he was trying to drive away. <laughs> Dude, Caroline said, this is the funniest part. She, she said when she saw me, Standing up on my deck, like long hair, silk pants with my, with basically my dick out with a taser in my hands. She's literally like, all I could think of is how much you looked like Patrick Swayze. And it was the greatest compliment I have ever received in my entire life. She's like, you looked and sounded like Patrick Swayze. And I was like, and the rest of the night, I'll tell you this, I was insufferable. I was, I was the most insufferable I have ever been in my entire life. I, two in the morning, I'm walking around and I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, usually I like to save people one at a time, but sometimes you just got to go for the twofer. You know what I mean? You know, some, you know, and then, and then <laughs> Caroline was like, damn, I wish I would have like reacted better and like taken a video and take, took pictures of the plates, but I kind of panicked and I was like, don't worry, Caroline, you did the right thing. You alerted the authorities, number one and number two. And she was like, I hate you. I actually fucking hate you. And I was like, thank God I was there to deescalate the situation. You know, thank God I was there to save lives. And then she was like, you fucking idiot. You pulled out a taser on someone that you didn't know if they had a gun or not. And at that, I had no answer. I kind of did one of these where I was like, yeah, that was pretty dumb. But I couldn't say that because I was already so committed to being Patrick Swayze. So instead, I just said, yeah, I gave him an ocular pat down from the deck and I didn't assess the threat. You know, when your adrenaline is coursing, you're able to, uh, you know, tap into 2020 vision and just, I looked in there and I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't assess a threat. And so I, I had to do what I had to do to save lives, Caroline. I was insufferable. This went on for like 30 minutes. I was like, Ooh, my back is so tight from saving lives. My adrenaline was jacked. I, it was so funny. I texted the production crew at OTK at fucking 2.30 a.m. And I was like, hey, guys, uh, just so you know, I might be a little late for my call time tomorrow because uh, <laughs> I just I just defused an attempted vehicular homicide and uh, my adrenaline is a little jacked. So, but here's the craziest thing. I don't know how Caroline fell asleep right afterward. It wasn't even like 15 minutes and Caroline was like, I'm still there sitting in bed like, you're a hero. You're a shiny golden god. (laughs) Just looking at the mirror like Patrick Bateman. You're fucking, those, those are a hero's biceps. My favorite thing is like, we have uh, people who work at our building at the front desk, right? And I'm, I'm friends with all of them. And my favorite one is, is is a woman like in her 40s, early 50s. But she's like, she's very zesty. She's very sassy. And when I came in today, she was like, there he is. There he, there's the hero. And I was still in drag from the Donna. I was still wearing my Donna costume. And I was like, oh, yeah, saving lives. No big deal, baby. <laughs> And she was like, what is, what is wrong with you? Who are you? You are a degenerate. (laughs) And it wasn't even like good Donna makeup. It was like Donna makeup after I had taken like one makeup wipe and did like a once over. So I have like fucking mascara on my cheek. It literally looked like I was a wine mom who had just gone through a messy divorce and a bottle of Chateau Neuf to pop. I looked like hot shit on a biscuit. And there I was walking through my fucking lobby, telling the story again to everybody. And that's when I ocularly assessed the situation. But you know what? I'm an idiot who's lived his life in a way that uh, it's worth a good story, I guess. I got a few good stories out of it. What was the problem between the driver and the couple? Uh, Apparently, it was a fucking parking spot. 
And this couple just took a parking spot and that guy went crazy and started ramming their car. <laughs> that is, dude, imagine the mindset behind a person who's like, oh, you took my parking spot? Time to try and murder you in cold blood. <laughs> oh, you added a minute onto my commute? Not today. <laughs>